How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Panda back with another video. Hope you guys are doing well. I know I am. As I always say in my, in my videos, hope you guys are doing well during these crazy ass times. I do love and appreciate all love and support you can give me on the YouTube and on the Twitch lately. Tier 5's out. Holy shit. PTR Tier 5's out. And that means you will be having a, a new iteration of a video. Basically, with Tier 5 being on the PTR, I'm going to be coming out with a video how to heal SSC and Tempest Keep as any healing class. Paladin, Wrestle Shaman, Wrestle Druid, Holy Paladin, Holy Priest, all those things. Basically, how to heal tk and ssc as all those classes and i think it's gonna be really fun so make sure you guys look forward to that video today though you know i i kind of want to stay along the lines of how to heal you know i kind of like that uh genre you know for lack of a better term that we're going with and basically today how to heal every single heroic in tbc as any healing class this video is going to be a chunky video i will have like, excerpts or whatever you want to call them uh of, of each dungeon in the description so if you want if you need help with a specific one you can go ahead in the description and click that and while you're there subscribe join the panda squad i'd love to have each and every one of you guys literally like only 10 percent of the people that watch my videos are subscribed so make sure you subscribe help hand out and i really really appreciate it. so the way this video is going to go is basically we're going to be covering each dungeon that that will occur to you in the game so the first three are obviously ramps blood blood furnace and shattered halls those are the ones that you're going to experience first leading into zanger march when you do sv underbog and you know slave pens basically you know we're just going to go, you know, what, what you will exp experience first, because I feel like this will help newcomers that are maybe new to TBC or just now experiencing heroics and uh, maybe, you know, like the difficulty being raised up a little bit. Um, so that that's the route that we're going to be taking. And as well, we're going to be covering some general knowledge, maybe some stuff that you should know on the trash. And then we'll be covering each boss and how to heal each boss in every single heroic as every single healer in TBC. So let's hop right into it, shall we? So hopping right into it, we're going to be starting with Hellfire Peninsula first. And the first dungeon that, you're like the first heroic, basically that you'll be experiencing is, you know, basically ramps. The, the, the ramps is a fairly easy dungeon, even on heroic difficulty. But there are some things that you should know going into it. The Bone Chewer Destroyers have a Mortal Strike, which which are basically prevalent in every single pat all the way to the final boss. So make sure you know when that Mortal Strike happens. You know, you you, you get big heals going out if you play a priest. You can get the shields off. You know, to mitigate some of that damage, so you don't have to heal because your heals will be a little bit weaker you know on the trash packs you know if you're a shaman make sure you maintain your totems and you know if you're a paladin make sure you maintain light's grace throughout this so you know you're able to efficiently heal through the mortal strike Moving into the first boss, which is Watchkeeper Gorgomar. I have no idea how to pronounce that. The first boss of ramps, same as the trash. He has a mortal strike and a knockback. So again, like I said, on the trash, make sure you shield. And uh, it's basically, the, you know, the mortal strike does hit hard. So make sure you have earth shield if you play a shaman. Palmer new shield if you're playing a priest. And uh, during that mortal strike, try to mitigate it as much as you can. Moving over to the second boss, Omar the Unscared. Basically, he, he has this aura that he has which is it's called treacherous aura it's basically an aoe dot so make sure you spread out and whoever does have that make sure you heal them keep keep earth shield on them maybe throw a couple life blooms or rejuves on them if you're playing a druid along those lines and uh again make sure you spread out during this phase he will also summon a pet um that does a lot of damage so make sure that whoever is tanking that or has threat on that make sure you're big healing them with earth shield or maybe you're throwing a power word shield on them until the tank can get the threat back on the pet on to the final boss of heroic ramparts nizan and Vazrudin. Uh, don't stay in the fire. Basically, you know, he, he, if you've done normals, you know the fight. He shoots fire down and uh, don't stay in that because on Heroic, that does a lot of fucking damage. Again, Palm Renew Shield, whoever stands on top of it maybe gets hit by it. Same goes for Resto Druid. Throw hots on them. Maintain your hots on them while maintaining on the tank as well. Uh, Earth Shield the tank to help out with, you know, with the damage that will be, that'll be coming in. Also, he does a fear when he comes down, so make sure you fear ward your tank or, uh, you know, if, if maybe if you're not undead or whatever class you may be, make sure you fear ward yourself if you're playing a priest if you're a shaman keep tremor down because that fear will that, that fear could fuck you over when he comes down and the fear happens you'd be feared in the fire then it could be a wipe so make sure you know there's a lot of things in this guide that are basically general knowledge some stuff that you should just keep in mind and be wary of again this is one of them you know he does a fear Keep that Trevor down, fear ward your tank, whatever it may, you must do, but uh, just keep note of that. Moving right over across the street to Blood Fur Furnace, basically some general knowledge. Uh, the only thing that really hits hard in here is the Fell Guards, and you don't really experience the Fell Guards until the very end. I just, you know, I, I, again, general knowledge, I want you guys to be, you know, weary of these things and, you know, for you guys to be, you know, knowledgeable about these things 
Um, the fell guards do hit like a train, so make sure you don't pull too many of them. And uh, it, when, when you do pull them big heals, make sure you know you're getting that palm renew shield on your tank. Make sure he's staying alive. Keep keep that earth shield on them. Uh, and if, if you're a druid, make sure those hots are rolling. Uh, if you're a holy paladin, just spam max rank heals in them because th this is the only hard part of the trash in blood furnace, in my opinion. So the first boss you're going to experience is the maker. Uh, he has a mind control. So basically whoever gets mind control, just fear them. If you know, if it's a mage or whatever, you don't really got to fear them. But uh, you know, if you're playing a priest, whoever gets mind control, try to fear them. Uh, and also, you know, maybe if you have a lock that's not mind control, you can curse of tongues them if you'd like. Uh, just try to maintain, you know, heals or whoever's getting damaged on from the Microsoft person basically off to the second boss brogok i guess I, I guess that's how you pronounce it um this boss is kind of annoying because it's kind of like slave pens where he shoots out basically aoe poison so during this again if you're if you, if you got those max rank chain heals ready throw out them hots if you're a druid or maybe you can even pop trank if you want you can pop tranquil if you're a druid uh big heals if you're a coh priest during this fight it's the only thing to be really wary of during the second boss of uh blood Vernus is the poison because it actually does a lot of tremendous amount of damage off to the the final boss keldon the breaker uh basically he does a volley make sure everybody's on you know make sure everybody's topped off good to go with hots going on them uh when, when he does the volley um i'm not quite sure if you're a shaman if you could ground it you can go ahead and try let me know down in the comments if that works i don't quite know if you can do that uh, also again so some things to keep in mind he does the giant fire nova so make sure when you see him cast that you get the fuck out again there's little like fire things coming out of the ground dps can stand on that and healers for a dps and healing in increased buff it's like it's like a better version of bloodlust that you're able to get for like 30 seconds so make sure you pick that up it's, it's literally just like these lights that are beaming on the ground that you can go ahead and pick up and we're chugging right along boys just like i wanted to hopefully we're not going too fast again like i said there will be time stamps in the description because we are going to fly through this video so if there's anything specifically that you want to cover more just go back right just go just click it go right back to it <clears throat> going to the last dungeon in hellfire peninsula would be shattered halls some general knowledge the shattered hand legionnaires they basically interrupt so don't be too close to them uh again if you're healing or casting anything you're right next to them you're going to get pummeled and that could cost you a wipe uh, the Shadow Moon Acolytes, if you see it, casting a heal, go ahead and try to, you know, fear them if you're a priest. So if it's safe, you know, you can fear to interrupt them. If you're a shaman, you know, you can uh, earth shock them. If you're a paladin, you can hodge them. So make sure to be, you know, as prevalent as you can on the interrupts when it comes to uh, these mobs. Exactly. Because those heals can, can be, end up being a bitch. Uh, the first boss you're going to encounter in Shattered Halls is Grand Warlock Nether Curse. Basically, he just has the Dark Spin and Death Coil. The only difference on Heroic is that it does a tremendous amount of damage. So be ready to basically kind of AoE heal uh, because he, he does he does the Death Coil very quickly, and it's not on a specific person. It's always random. So you know, make sure you're ready to sporadically heal the entire raid. And that's basically it for this guy. Also, you know, he does the little you know fire thing that you got to walk out of. You know, so make sure you don't stand that. Tell off the people that did get hit by that and basically a tank and spank very easy fight moving on to the second one blood guard parong basically it's just a tank and spank so just make sure you know you literally just just heal the tank it's, it's not that hard of a fight there's literally like no mechanics it's literally just a tank and spank when it comes to the second boss and uh this boss is only available on heroic so you know make sure to keep that in mind warbringer omorog basically just watch threat because tanks they can't taunt on this fight so make sure to watch your threat he also does fixate on the on the person with the highest amount of threat so you know just watch your threat another tank and spank uh onto the final boss you know we flew through this dungeon because a lot of it's just super easy onto the final boss war chief cargath blade fist spread out and fear the ads that come in through the entrance again you could cyclone them you could have tingling roots you could earthbind if you're a shaman at the entrance you could hodge if you're a paladin basically you know if you want to help out and you have no form of cc you know be that cc help out your your group make sure you spread out as well because he'll do a charge and uh it's literally just a tank and spank but again make sure people are topped off after that charge because on heroic it is a it is a tremendous tremendous amount of more damage than normal so we have finished hellfire peninsula let's go ahead and head on to zangra marsh the first dungeon that you're going to experience in zangra marsh is slave pens basically the general knowledge the colophane scale healers uh they heal so make sure to interrupt them it's simple as that also these are actually very important i'm glad i put this on the list because it's very important is the coil thing raise these will wipe you asap so make sure you dispel what the, like so basically these do a fear so who's ever uh, like feared by these guys dispel that immediately because you'll end up pulling more mobs and it's a wipe so these are very very important go ahead and mark them if, if, if you're leading the group or you know tell your raid lead or your group leader yo can you mark these so we're aware of these so make sure that 
that you're paying attention to the Coil of Fang Rays. The first boss you're going to experience is Amenu the Betrayer. Basically, it's literally just to destroy all the totems besides the fire one. Uh, if the fire one do does go off, expect to have big ass heals. Uh, literally just a tank and smeg, not too hard. He uh, he his chain lightning does do a lot of damage, so make sure you spread out so you don't get affected by that. And uh, just big heals on your tank, an easy tank and spank. Moving on to the second one, Rockmar the Crackler. This boss is a little bit more difficult. Uh, make sure your tank is full health the entire fight. The reason is because he puts a debuff on the tank that basically does like 400, 500 damage every second unless they're topped off. It's, it's called Grievous Wounds. That's the name of it. So ma make sure that your tank is topped off at all times. Also on this fight, if you play a Shaman, uh, you can put Drop Nature Resist that'll help a little bit with, with the spit that he does. So just, just keep that in mind. Also, you know, when, when he hits half health, he's going to pop it in Rage that increases damage and attack speed. So make sure to pop all your cds basically here if you're a healer it blow your load try to keep your tank alive as much as you can onto the final boss quagmiron or however you want to pronounce that quagmirian whatever uh basically this boss is kind of a bitch on heroic um the, you know nature you can get a nature resist buff from the guy in the cage to the far left also if you're a shaman you could have nature resist totem down and if you are a paladin you could have the nature resist aura a lot of you guys may have already done this, so you know about the acid spray. Again, make sure to have that, that, that all that nature resist on, you know, totems, whatever it may be, aura. Um, big AoE heals when this happens. Again, if you have a paladin in your group, uh, you could bop one of the healers and you just it raid heal this entire time. A lot of damage is going to be coming out, so make sure to, you know, maintain AoE healing. If you can, if you're a paladin, this is going to be a little hard for you, but just max rank heal as much as you can. Moving into the second dungeon that you're going to experience is Steam Vaults. Again, you, like, like, you've probably already noticed so far, um, the trash probably has like a mortal strike and has a heal. Some of the bosses are tank and spank, and then one boss has a mechanic. That's how a lot of the general senses of a lot of these dungeons are. You'll you'll get the general premise of it, and you'll start noticing, wow, these, these heroics aren't that hard. It's literally just damage increases. They're really not. There's not a lot of new mechanics. It's just damage increases. Um, but moving into Steam Vaults, some general knowledge, the Colophane Oracles heal and fear. So... That's literally just like all the other ones. It's the same shit. So again, make sure you interrupt that heal because you're going to need to. So the first boss you're going to experience is Hydromancer Thespa. Can't pronounce that correctly. It's okay. Basically, she's going to spawn some clouds that have lightning and it's going to pump you. It does a lot more damage than normal. So be wary of that. Also, she's going to have another um, debuff that she's going to put on, on a random target called Lung Burst. It deals a lot of damage very quickly. Like every, I think it's like 350 every second. Make sure that is dispelled. If you play a Paladin, dispel that shit. If you play a Priest, dispel that shit if you have no dispels and that happens make sure you're, you know you're, you're max rank killing and you're trying to top off that person because that's going to be doing a lot of damage to them that's basically it for the first boss really easy tank and spank but just you know pay attention to the to the dispels and the giant clouds above you uh, Mecha Ginner, Steam Rigger. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, basically, all, he's just gonna do a lot of AoE damage. Uh, he, you know, he throws out the little blade saws that do a lot of AoE damage. So, Mac Chain Heal, COH, you know, Trank if you'd like to as, as a, a, a Druid, uh, and Big Heals if you're playing a Paladin. That's basically an easy tank and spank second boss. On to the final boss, Warlord Kelthresh. You know, basically an easy tank and spank. Uh, he does have the Impale, so whoever gets Impaled, big heals on them. If you're playing a Priest, you can shield them to mitigate some of that damage. Um, but just big kills when he does when he does the impale easy tank and spank let's move on to the next dungeon shall we so underbog some general knowledge you should know about underbog is the merc blood spearman you don't encounter these until you get to the second boss but uh they do a viper sting which is kind of annoying so that that will drain your mana and if you do if you decide to aoe pull them and pull a lot and you get multi viper stung uh yeah you're gonna be um so be very weary of that let's move into the first boss shall we uh, Hungar Fen, basically, he, he, he just does an acid spray, literally no different than Slave Pens. So, again, Nature Resist and big AoE heals. Easy tank and spank. Let's move to the second one, shall we? Uh, Gazan, he has an Acid Breath, which is actually does more damage than the Acid Geyser from the previous boss. So, you're going you're gonna to be doing a lot of healing here. If you have melee, he does do a cleave as well. So, make sure to chain heal, AoE heal, whatever you got to keep the raid alive. Again, Nature Resist as well, like you did on the first boss. Moving to the third boss, Swamp Lord Muzalek. He's the one with the pet. Uh, if you're good enough, you could, you know, if you're a priest and you're good enough, you could shadow over death to freeze. But basically, he's going to do a freezing trap and then he's going to multi shot you. So, you know, when you see the freezing, know that the multi shot's going to come. The multi shot actually does hit tremendously harder than normal. So be wary of that as well. A lot of damage is going to be going out and you're going to need to top off the raid immediately. So, again, max rig chain heal. Um, and yeah, just be ready to heal the entire raid and get him back up to full. Moving to the final boss, the Black Stalker. Um, spread out for Chain Lightning, you know, and also he did... 
also he'll knock somebody up in the air and they'll fly down to, so like like the knockup does damage and then the the damage when they hit the ground will do more damage to them so uh make sure whoever gets knocked up has a shield maybe they're healed uh and ns them if they're very very low and spread out for the chain heal very easy tank and spank boss let's go ahead and move over to akadon so the first dungeon that you're going to experience in akadon is, is uh, okay i don't know how to pronounce it okay but the first dungeon you're going to experience is mana tombs some general knowledge about mana tombs is the ethereal dark casters they have a mana burn so just be wary of that and know about it um the next is terrors they fear so make sure you fear where your tank keep tremor down if you don't have either of those this might be a little bit difficult just make sure you clear the room before dealing with these or just single target them down so you don't even got to worry about the fear the first boss you're going to experience is Panamonius. Attacks, basically his attacks do shadow damage. So if you're playing a priest, make sure that you buff everybody with shadow protection. Um, and he's also going to do a, a, a void blast. So make sure you are max range of that because it's a gigantic knockback. And uh, easy tank and spank. We'll move into the second boss, Tavarok. He basically is a giant rock. Basically, he does, he does, he does an earthquake. So again, this is a good time to use Trank to top everybody off. You're going to need to be doing big AoE heals here. If you're a priest, max rank COH. Shaman, max rank you know, chain heal, whatever it takes to get the raid back up to full. Also, he does a debuff. Basically, it is 10% damage of 10% uh, damage of the of the player's health every one second, and it stuns. So whoever has that, make sure big heals on them as well. Moving to the third boss, Yor. Basically, this is a summon boss that's only available on heroic, uh, literal summon tank and spank boys. The definition of it. He has no mechanics, easy as shit, and only available in the heroic version for a quest. So let's move to the final boss, shall we? Next is Prince Shafar, basically literally a tank and spank with literally a tank and spank as well. It's super easy. Uh, he will summon some sparks, so make sure that you do kill those and the people affected by them. Just like in Karazhan, you go ahead and AOE heal them and keep them alive. Easy tank and spank, easy dungeon uh, if you are prepared and you know ready to go. Okay, Akanai Crips, on to the next one, boys. Some general info. Unliving Cleric, they heal. Interrupt it. You guys know the routine. So in these general information categories, um, I cover what is the most threatening mob and what you should like, like be weary as uh, as a healer, what, what to expect. Th th these trashes are easy. They either have a mortal strike, they fear, or they heal. Like that's the only threatening trash mechanic in these dungeons. Let's go ahead and move over to the first boss, shall we? In Arcanite Crypts, Shirek the Dead Watcher. Basically, he does, he does a lot of damage, so blow your CDs here. You know, healers and spellcasters must be aware of the debuff Inhibit Magic, which is the aura around this boss that will reduce your casting time by 50%, and it stacks four times. So be sure to spread out and stand at max range. Whoever is targeted with focus fire the boss will shout your name will immediately have to run from the spot they were previously standing in or else they'll get blown up so again let me just you know dumb it down for people that don't understand uh you need to be max range of this boss because he has an aura that reduces your casting speed by 50 percent and it stacks four times so he will also put a debuff on a target and yell out their name and you need to just keep moving because you're gonna like, like if you stay in one place you're gonna blow up very easy boss but again it has mechanics and a lot of people suck at mechanics but be weary of this boss Moving over to the second boss, because there's only two bosses in this dungeon, is Exarch Malkadar, basically. It's a very it's a very hard-hitting boss, but besides that, it's pretty easy. Uh, just try to you know maintain your mana, because it is kind of a long fight due to the amount of health he has and the amount of damage he's outputting. So make sure to try to conserve your mana if you can. But uh, just a very hard-hitting boss. Very easy tank and spank, in my opinion, as well. So let's go ahead and move into Sethic Halls, shall we? Moving into Sethic Halls, you know, some general information. The Sethic Talon Lords, basically, they uh, they have an ability called Talon of Justice, which stuns your tank. Be wary of that, because when they, it's like a three or four second long stun. So, you know, make sure that during this, you know, during that stun, you're, you're big healing your tank. Also, the birds do a knockback knock back and a stun. So, make sure you're wary of those as well while you're going throughout this dungeon. The first boss you're going to experience is Dark Weaver Sith. Easy tank and spank, AoE heal, but watch threat when adds come. You know, he, he's going to spawn different variations variations of ads that are going to do different variations of debuffs again i think you get grounding these but uh you know regardless if you play a paladin or a priest these are dispellable if you don't have any dispels big aoe heals because your tank is going to be taking a lot of damage and you know your fellow dps are going to be getting the, the you know the debuffs that are going to be doing a lot of damage whether it's fire or earth or water and you know along those lines so make sure you have big heals going out during this fight and, you know, another another two-boss dungeon, very easy. The final boss you're going to be experiencing is Talon King Ilkis. Basically, he does the slow in the sheep that, you know, it needs to be dispelled if you have it. If you don't have it, um, 
just just be careful you know drag the boss away because he does teleport and do, does the explosion so make sure you los of that um he also does a hateful bolt just like in in karazan like curator does he does that he does do a hate, hateful bolt on the second highest of threat so watch your threat and whoever gets hit by that just go ahead and top them off very easy dungeon let's go ahead and move on to shadow labs shall we Move over to Shadow Labs. Some general knowledge you should know is Cabal, the, the Cabal Spellbinders. They mind control and interrupt you, so be wary of that. And it's not like a melee interrupt. It's literally a spell shock. So be, be wary of the mind controls and the spell shocks. The first boss you're going to experience is, is Ambassador Helma. Basically, he literally just fears. So again, Tremor, Fear Ward. If you don't have a Tremor, Fear Ward, big kills on the tank. Second boss is Blackheart, the Insider. Make sure to shield yourself before the mind control phase. You know, be max range right before and try to survive. That's about it for this boss. Blackheart's really, really, really easy. The third boss is Grand Mis Grandmaster Vorpel, basic tank and spank. When you get pulled to the middle, top everybody off. Very, very easy. Again, these fights aren't very, aren't, aren't, they're, they're not really that hard. Again, the hardest one I would say is the, is the second boss being Blackheart the Insider. And the foul boss, Murmur, again, just, just literally just stand on the outer edge. Just spread out and stand, literally just stand on the outer edge and heal. It's just a very easy tank and spank fight. I don't see how, how people have a problem with it. Uh, one person will be knocked up in the air every couple like seconds or whatever so make sure they're ns or healed or whatever it may be or even shielded very easy murmur murmur is easy guys i don't see how it's that hard murmur is very very easy Let, let's go ahead and move on to the next dungeon shall we and that next dungeon takes us to nether storm we're going to start off with botanica you know very easy some general information the the, the sun seeker gene splicer that you know they did they, they do a death and decay that pe if people stand in they're going to need big heals uh that's basically it for botanica this shit's really easy you know, there's a couple arcane missiles that the ads do there's a couple healers but you know you guys get the general you guys get the general conclusion that you know heals mortal strike and big damage that's basically all the trash really does so just be wary of, of the death and decay because that'll do a lot of damage the first boss is commander Saranis. dispel arcane re uh, re re resonance the first boss you're going to be dealing with is Commander Saranis. Basically, dispel arcane re re resonance. I can't pronounce that. Uh, basically, it stacks up three times and it does like 500 damage each tick, stacking up three times on her tank. So make sure that's dispelled. If it's not, if you don't have a dispeller in your group, big heal because you're going to need it. Blow all your CDs here because it's going to be doing a lot of damage to your tank. You know, being able to maintain those heals is going to be massive. Moving to the second boss, High bot Botanist Farwin. You know, literally the definition of a, of, 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 of a tank and spank. Let's go to the next boss, shall we? Thorngrin, the tender. Whoever gets sacrificed, big heals on them. Again, he will. He has he has another version of Death and Decay that is kind of rough, and he also has a basically kind of like a enrage when he when he gets twenty five percent. So big heals and pop all your shit when he hits twenty five percent. The person that is sent to the sacrifice, make sure you heal them. Big heals on them because they will need it. The sacrifice will be stuck in there for a little bit and it'll be doing a big damage just like in Karazhan on, on, on Ilhoof when you get sacrificed. Big heals on them. Um, moving over to Lodge, which is the fourth boss of the, of, of Botanica. Um, Lily's a tank and spank, but uh, you know one person will be getting an, 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 uh, a debuff called Allergic Reaction that will be doing a lot of damage, a lot, a lot of damage. So again, big heals on them. Easy tank and spank. This shit's not hard. Let's move to the final boss, shall we? Uh, Warp Splinter, basically just big heals as his arc Arcane Volley does a massive amount of damage on, uh, on Heroic versus Normal. So just, you know, literally just a tank and spank, keep your tank alive. When the adds come, you know, you will need to make sure that you're helping them because on Heroic, they do tend to have a little bit more health if your damage is low. But if you have a good amount of damage, you can just basically just to funnel into your tank. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Basically for Botanica, boys, let's move to the next dungeon. Uh, heroic mech's actually pretty easy. The only one that I've actually dealt with myself, and the only add in in, in the trash that seems to be difficult, in my opinion, is the Mechanar uh, uh, Tinker. They just throw like nether nether bombs basically, and they do a metric fuck ton of damage, and they mana drain you. So just be wary of that. They're the little dudes with the with the shit on their back with the grenades, and you'll see them cast it and throw it. Uh, just be wary of those guys. The, the, no, heroic mech's not too hard. The bosses do do a lot of damage, like 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 you know Me McConnell Lord basically you know mcconnell lord capitus pay attention to what debuff you have and go to your partner you know big heals this fight because he does he does send out another bomb that is a lot of damage so be wary of that in this fight as well uh that's the only thing that is a lot of damage honestly is the aoe bombs so spread out be next to your partner if you know if you have a plus sign go stand next to the plus sign partner if you have a minus sign go si go stand next to your minus sign partner and that's basically it boys this shit's pretty easy Moving to the second boss, basically Nethermancer Sepathra. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Lily taking spank and just kill anybody that's 
hit you know hit by the fire on heroic you know she, you know normally she the, the the chick spawns two fire ads on heroic she'll spawn three uh so just be wary of that whoever gets hit by the fire or the fire bolt you know make sure you heal them she'll also do a dragon's breath on the tank that stuns that, that stuns him uh for like three seconds or whatever and does a dot as well so make sure you dispel that if you can on the final boss pathalon the the calculator uh basically it, it's lit tank and spank he doesn't do much uh, when he hits 20% though, he'll pop in enrage, so make sure you blow all your shit here because he'll be doing a lot more damage, so just blow all your CDs when he enrages at 20%. Now for the final dungeon in Netherstorm, um, uh, Arc, basically. Arc's not too bad, Arctraz is not too bad, uh, you know, some general knowledge, the, the Entropic Eye, you know, it basically, it's the giant eye thingy uh it basically it is a chaos breath which will nearly one shot anybody so when, when you see them casting that make sure you know you get b kills going out during that cast the first boss you're going to uh deal with is zerketh the unbound cast shout it basically casts shadow nova and does massive damage and knockbacks again if you're max range you shouldn't have to deal with this uh it, it does do shadow damage so if you're playing a priest you can put shadow buff shadow protection on people or if you play with a paladin they can put shadow resist aura on if, if they you know, you want to be a little bit tankier during this phase but it's not too hard there's a little black shit on the ground don't stand in that and uh, literally a tank and spank with the knockback so make sure you got big old big aoe heals during that knockback Second like boss, Delilah the Doomsayer. A gift of the Doomsayer will debuff a random player. This heals Delilah when the player with the debuff is healed. So, you know, when you so basically when she casts this buff on somebody, you know, just shield them if you can. Um, if they're taking if it's on the tank, then it it's kind of hard. You kind of just got to heal through it. But whoever gets this debuff, basically just stop healing them. Maybe put a shield on them if you can, or maybe a small renew or a small life bloom because it won't heal the it won't heal the guy too much, the, the, the boss too much. But basically, whoever gets a debuff, don't heal them. Simple as that. Tank and spank. Let's move on to the next boss. Wrath Scryer Sosereth. I cannot pronounce that. Honestly, it's so difficult. Uh, basically, heal anybody that, that's damaged by, you know, the fell immolation. Literally just fire that, 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 that that's on the target. Just heal them. Tank and spank. On to the next one. Pretty fucking easy. Heartbringer Skyrus is the final boss. First cell, basically the first cell, Face Hunter will come out. So big heals. Uh, it literally is a tank and spank on the, on, on the uh, Face Hunter. He's not too hard. On the third cell, Soulfront will come out and put a healing debuff on a target, mainly the tank 90% of the time. So make sure to, you know, damage mitigate this with Earth Shield if you're playing a Shaman. If you're a Priest, you can shield them. Otherwise, big heals on, on them during the third cell. Uh, on the fourth cell, calls a Blackwing, a Blackwing ad that has a Mortal Strike. So be wary of that as well. Uh, but when the boss finally comes out, uh, you know, he has a mind control and he has a fear and he has a mana burn. So be wary of those three abilities. Also, he'll drain the life out of somebody. Whoever is drained by that life needs like instant heals ASAP. I'm talking if you have, if you have, you know, nature swiftness, palm shield, they're going to need that drain, that drain shielded immediately because it will kill whoever it touches. And that's basically it for Ark. It's not hard. The final boss does have some mechanics. It does have the Mortal Strike. It does have another healing debuff and with a knockback and an interrupt. And that drain is very important. Be very careful of that as a healer. We're on to the final section. We're covering Caverns of Time. Old Hills, Brad Foothills is actually semi-decently hard on Heroic um, if you're not very geared and prepared for it. Some general information. Basically, the, the, the Dernhold Rifleman, they have a scatter shot. It, it, it actually hits like a train. Uh, so be very careful of that. And I'm pretty sure it's stuns you as well so be careful of that uh the tar mill guardsmen have a mortal strike and a shield charge which can interrupt your heals so be very wary of that as well the first boss you're going to deal with is lieutenant drake he literally has a mortal strike but that mortal strike hits like a fucking train so make sure you know when, when that happens you know your make sure your tank is topped off at all times whatever class you're playing make sure your shit's topped off at all times and uh and then when the mortal strike happens try to damage mitigate it with an earth shield or a normal shield on to the second boss captain scarlock literally a tank and spank uh he drops a, con a, a concentration on the ground that actually does a lot of fucking damage so make sure you move out of that and heal the people that were standing in it Moving to the final boss, Epoch Hunter. Basically, conserve mana for the first three waves if you can. On private servers, you were not able to drink during the during the, you know the waves, but it seems like you can here on retail. So you know, try to conserve your mana if you can. You you will be able to drink though if you get low on mana. Uh, but when the boss eventually comes out, pop lust, whatever you gotta do, drums, whatever you gotta do, and blow them up. It's literally a tank and spank. This dungeon is not too hard, but there are some hard hitting abilities in it that may you know you know bring you some uh, you know pain. <laughs> 
on to the final dungeon of this list and this guide, Black Morass. Black Morass is probably one of the worst dungeons out there because it's very boring, but it's very hard on Heroic nevertheless. There's not really any gen general info for this. Basically, uh, try to drink as much as you can. Use your dragons towards the end. If you do have a paladin, you know, you can run back and forth and keep using the dragons if you'd like to do that. Uh, just try to conserve your mana as a healer. It's kind of hard. Keep that mana spring down. You, you know, druids do have innervate. Priests do have shadow fiend. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, sh uh, paladins just never go oom, um, so it's it's fine for them let's go with the first boss shall we um chrono lord deja he does an arcane blast that hits like a train and also does a chain lightning so make sure you spread out and be ready for this big incoming damage moving to the second boss um temporis he, he gets a buff that increases his attack speed by 50 percent mages can spell steal it if you're playing a paladin or a priest this can be dispelled so make sure to dispel it on to the final boss, Anus. I don't know how to pronounce that. When when he sand breaths, fat heals on the tank because he's gonna be taking he's gonna be taking damage from the boss and now sand breath. So when that happens, big 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 heals. Also, try to make sure everybody is topped off at all time because he will do basically like like a time stop that stuns everybody for like five seconds or whatever. So make sure everybody's topped off, including the tank during this because he's still gonna be attacking the tank, but you're gonna be stunned for you're gonna be stunned for a while. So make sure to be wary of that. Uh, just. Keep everybody topped out throughout this entire fight and you shouldn't have a problem keep the hots rolling if you play a priest or a druid and that is basically it boys i know we speed ran this video but like i said there'll be timestamps in the description if you want to go over anything else uh Subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video. There's going to be a lot of tier 5 content coming. How to heal SSC as any healer. How to heal TK as any healer. A lot of content to come on the channel. I love and appreciate and respect each and every one of you guys. If you can, if you guys can do me a favor, click the subscribe button down in the description. I love each and every one of you guys. And I'll see you on Twitch. Links down in the description as well. I'll see each and every one of you guys in the next video. Peace.